A very special candlelit celebration of music, poetry and scripture now on BBC Two as we bring you Easter from Kings. Beloved in Christ, we come this Eastertide as witnesses of the passion and resurrection of our blessed Lord. We are invited to walk, sit and stand alongside Jesus during the last days of his earthly life, to receive with gratitude his gift of himself to save us from our sins to witness his agony, betrayal and execution on Calvary, and finally to share the astonishment and joy of that first Easter morning. 
with music, poetry and scripture, we reflect on the all-consuming love of God, the sacrifice of his Son and his glorious resurrection. As we do so, we remember all those facing anxiety, illness or bereavement, and those whose lives are blighted by war, famine or disease. We hold them in our prayers and we ask for God's blessing upon them. Amen. The poet Robert Frost contemplates humanity's fall into temptation. God made a beauteous garden 
with lovely flowers strewn. But one straight, narrow pathway that was not overgrown. And to this beauteous garden he brought mankind to live. And said, to you, my children, these lovely flowers I give. Prune ye my vines and fig trees. With care my flowerets tend, but keep the pathway open. Your home is at the end. Then came another master who did not love mankind and planted on the pathway gold flowers for them to find. And mankind saw the bright flowers that, glittering in the sun, quite hid the thorns of avarice that poison blood and bone. And far off many wondered, and when life's night came on, they still were seeking gold flowers, lost, helpless, and alone. Oh, cease to heed the glamour that blinds your foolish eyes. Look upward to the glitter of stars in God's clear skies. Their ways are pure and harmless and will not lead astray. Bid aid your erring footsteps to keep the narrow way. And when the sun shines brightly, tend flowers that God has given and keep the pathway open that leads you on to heaven.
Isaiah predicts the suffering of God's servant. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Thanks be to God.
Jesus celebrates the Passover with his disciples. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof, until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and said, Take this, and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine, until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread, and gave thanks, and brake it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table, and truly the Son of Man goeth as it was determined, but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. Thanks be to God.
The betrayal of Jesus is related by St. Luke. And he came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down, and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer, and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow, and said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? Thanks be to God.